Well, ever since 9-11, Americans have been bombarded with the message that Islam is a religion of peace. But around the world, many terrorists claim their actions are inspired by the teachings of the Koran. So what's the real story? Here's CBN News anchor Lee Webb. The Islam is Peace campaign began in earnest the day after 9-11, when President Bush visited this mosque in Washington, D.C. The face of terror is not the true faith of Islam. That's not what Islam is all about. Islam is peace. And the leading Muslim advocacy group, the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE, has continued to spread the Islamist peace message through the media, even though CARE is now an unindicted co-conspirator in a terrorism case. Islam is not about hatred and violence. It's about peace and justice. Some have even suggested that Christianity is somehow as dangerous or more dangerous than radical Islam. Rosie O'Donnell said as much on the program The View last year. And if you take radical Islam and you want to talk about what's going on there, you have and to... And just you, one second, have to radical Christianity is just as threatening as radical Islam in a country like America. But is it? A new book says there's no comparison. Religion of Peace, Why Christianity Is and Islam Isn't by Robert Spencer says that while the Bible teaches Christians to love their enemies, the Quran teaches Muslims to be ruthless with unbelievers. This was the reaction of some British Muslims in London last year after a Danish cartoonist drew Muhammad with a bomb in his turban. It has been said that while most of the world's Muslims are not terrorists, most of the world's terrorists are Muslims. But many on the left still fear Christianity more than Islam. Spencer says it's time for the West to defend Christianity and tell the truth about Islam. Well, joining us now live from Boston is Robert Spencer. He's the author of Religion and Peace, Why Christianity Is and Islam Isn't. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Um, I've had an interesting uh, conversation with some Arab ambassadors a couple weeks ago, and, and one of them actually said that Islam is in need of a reformation. Um, is, is that sort of a prevailing view um, amongst, I guess, moderate Muslims? It's a common view, but I'll tell you one thing about that, Gordon. It's very important to understand. In Christianity, the Reformation was an attempt to get back to the basics, right? To clear away things that had crept in over the centuries that were not authentic and to restore the purity of the original message of the New Testament. Now, in Islam, there's already been a Reformation like that. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, the founder of the Wahhabi movement, was an 18th century reformer in Arabia. and that's exactly what he proposed to do. He cleared away everything that was, cr that was a later addition in Islam and got back to just what the Quran said and what Muhammad taught. And it became the most violent and virulent form of Islam that the world has yet seen. So I'm not really sure that a reformation is what is needed. What might be needed is a rejection of a literal understanding of a lot of passages of the Quran. Well, give us some examples of um, how is the Quran more violent than, than the Bible? Well, you know, of course, we all know that in the Old Testament, there are passages where God tells Joshua to clear out whole cities and things like that. But the one thing that he never does is say, and all believers should go and do likewise, or that this is your instructions, this is your pattern to follow. There have been many ways that uh, interpreters have understood those passages, most of the time in a spiritualized way, that they in some way stand for the struggle against sin within the soul of every believer. But in in the Quran, it's unmistakable that there are passages like in chapter 9, verse 5, slay the unbelievers wherever you find them. Chapter 9, verse 29, which extends and specifies the fight to refer even to Jews and Christians until they submit as inferiors under the rule of Islamic law. These things are not spiritualized and they are directed as open-ended, universalized commands to all believers to fight against unbelievers. And that's how they've been understood by mainstream Islamic commentators through the centuries. So it's really, it's, it's ridiculous. When people say, well, uh, the Bible is just as violent as the Quran, it just indicates that they don't really know what either one of them says. Um, is, is it possible for Christianity and Islam to peacefully coexist, or are they mutually exclusive? 
Well, in terms of doctrine, they're mutually exclusive because, of course, in 1 John it says, if you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father. Whereas in the Quran it says, anybody who says that Jesus is the Son of God is an unbeliever. And so... <clears throat> Excuse me, those two things don't coexist. But of course, Christians are prepared to coexist peacefully with anyone. But uh, Islamic traditional doctrine, traditional Islamic law, does not allow for peaceful coexistence between believers and unbelievers as equals in a society on an indefinite basis. Muhammad said Islam must dominate and not be dominated. And ultimately, unfortunately, all too many Muslims consider that to be an imperative to push to impose Islamic law upon the societies where they live and that means second-class status for non-Muslims. Um, uh, we don't seem to be able to get this. Um, you know, back in World War II, Winston Churchill called that struggle a struggle for Christendom, and he, and he was very bold in saying that, but we don't seem to get this. We seem to want to distance ourselves, if you will, from, from the basis of Western civilization. We, we don't want to claim that uh, all our concepts are based on Christianity. Um, why, why are we so reluctant to, to get into this and say our ideas are better? Well, you know, it's a strange thing, but it seems as if a kind of self-hatred has gripped Western civilization. We're ashamed of ourselves. We're ashamed of our Judeo-Christian heritage. Even people who aren't Jews and Christians are unwilling to acknowledge that the Judeo-Christian tradition has been responsible for the greatest civilization the world has ever known. This uh, self-hatred, I think, has become part of the pop culture ever since the Vietnam War. And that now it's really coming down to a challenge for us because the Islamic law that the jihadists want to impose upon the world would deny basic things that we take for granted. Freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, the equality of dignity of all people before God, the equality of rights of men with women, the equality of rights of all people regardless of creed, so that there's not a special class of people as there is in Islamic law. These things are all Judeo-Christian principles. And so this is the time when we need to cast that off and stand up and defend those things or we're certainly going to lose them. There seems to be a movement, um, uh, and, it, and it's frankly political, that um, Christians are just as bad as radical Muslims. And I know CNN is doing a whole series this week, and AP just released a rather puff piece on it saying, you know, everybody needs to watch it. And in that yes. segment, they're, they're going to say that um, if, if Christians are encouraging young women to dress modestly, uh, what's the difference between that and the Taliban? Uh, I saw that. Why, why are we... Why are we doing that? Why, why is that even allowed? Why, why, why does Rosie O'Donnell get applause for saying that you know, Christians are just as bad as radical Muslims? Well, this is, the, this is the common assumption among the mainstream media, and uh, it's just that fundamentalism, so-called, is the problem across the board. And so they have to make these ridiculous comparisons between modest dress in a Christian context and the Taliban. Do they even realize what goes on for women in the Taliban, that they kill girls who try to go to school, that uh, in Saudi Arabia, which is a society very similar to the society established by the Taliban, there were girls who died in a fire because the religious police wouldn't let them come out of the school that was burning because they weren't wearing their headscarves. I mean, where have you ever seen Christians behave that way when they talk about modesty? Uh, it's, a, it's a comparison that is so ridiculous as to be laughable, and yet it does seem to be the prevailing view of the elite. And uh, the only thing I know to do is to, well, I say thank God for CBN and for the fact that we're able to speak the truth here, and we know that since we, what we're saying is true, that reasonable people people, I think, will be able to see the difference. Well, I, I love to tell people I've never heard of United Methodist Jihad. It just <laughs> doesn't, yes. it doesn't, it doesn't exist in Christianity. You don't go out and, exactly. and, and kill people. The uh, final question, do you think that within a, a Muslim society <laughs> where Sharia law is sort of enshrined, and, and one of, I think for me one of the great disappointments of both Afghanistan and Iraq is that that's precisely what our State Department allowed, that their new constitutions yes. enshrine Sharia as the law of the land. Is it possible with that to have true democracy? No.
because Sharia law does not allow equality of rights for non-Muslims and for women. And so you're, if you're talking about democracy in the sense that it's always been understood in the West as, uh, uh, first of all, in, in, in ensuring, enshrining the rights of the individual as being uh, something that is uh, pertaining to his dignity before God, then that's one of the first things denied in Sharia for certain groups of people. And so ultimately those provisions in the Iraqi and Afghanistan, and, and Afghanistan constitutions are going to militate against the establishment of any kind of genuine Western-style democracy in either country. Uh, Robert, thank you for being with us, and thank you for this book, Religion of Peace. Thank you. Uh, why Christianity is and Islam isn't, it's available in bookstores across the country.